comes to Cambodia is either Angkor Wat or the Killing Field. And I would like to tell the world that we have a lot more than that. Okay. Uh, Jim hello everyone. Today I am happy to have Chef Nat here with us. Uh, she is one of the most uh, well-known chefs here in Cambodia who has been working to promote Khmer dishes. So Chef Nat, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. So uh, my first question to you, what inspires you to um, work on Khmer, di Khmer dishes and promote it uh, not only locally but globally? Mm. So, you know, I think, um, well, first thank you for this quick opportunity and I really appreciate it. Um, the thing is, um, you know, this is a, a long story, but if I, um, if I just keep it short, it was that for the first time when I uh, went to the U.S. in 2010 um, for work, and I started to, um, you know, after a few days, you know, as Cambodian away from home, um, I was craving for uh, 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 dishes, right, um, our, um, our home uh, our cuisine, but it just it's just out of luck that I couldn't find any uh, Khmer restaurant uh, nearby uh, where we uh, where we were. Uh, but then um, when I decided to go to uh, the restaurants that I could find, but um, it is um, is the the restaurant that um, that is um, that was. Uh, a neighboring country a restaurant um, and I went in I saw the menu there were some uh, Khmer dishes uh, but then I also heard the uh, the conversation was in Khmer and I started to I decided to ask so what is this restaurant Khmer restaurant or you know and they said well this is not Khmer restaurant uh, uh, well this is well it's owned by Cambodian but they have to call it somewhere someone else because no one's no Cambodia. Oh. I said, oh my God, right? Okay, so that's the first time, uh, first experience. But then when I started to be able to um, have a kitchen to cook, I also started to uh, uh, look for uh, ingredients to cook. So I went to uh, supermarkets and everything that I could find, instead of just say chili or eggplant or basil, it always has, um, you know, um, a country before that, which is not Khmer as well. Mm. But then I thought, okay, what's going on? Why things happen the way it is, uh, or the way it was, the way I saw? And I started to uh, do a lot of research and I understand that, you know, um, it's, it's actually a force, you know, that um, uh, a country has to, um, you know, work so hard on marketing, on promotions, and, um, and and so many things. So they have to educate um, the world about their cuisine in order for them to, uh, you know, introduce the, you know, uh, or motivate uh, the the other country in the world to to not only uh, understanding the flavor, but then be able to want to cook at home as well. So that they can have a chance to um, to import export the ingredients and have a chance to have their countries on every single products um, and because of that they also attract um, you know the world to visit their country mm. and I said oh my god there are so much to do um, but then I you know but having said all of this um, as Cambodian, I love Cambodian cuisine, but the more I travel, especially in the region, I fell in love with other cuisine. But before that, I love our cuisine, but I did not know how much I appreciate it until I know that um, other cuisine around us, they are great, I love them. But it helped me to appreciate my own cuisine even more because I know that we are equally good but we just lack of the the promotions, mm -hmm. the confidence, um, uh, um, the marketing, the you know so many things that we have to do. But at the same time, you know, I love cooking, I, I love exploring, and I start 
I'm, you know, doing a lot of research since, you know, when I was very, very young. But um, officially, uh, officially um, because I had to travel all over uh, Cambodia since 2005 to work for Community Living Arts at that time, the art NGO. Um, so I exposed to different cuisine uh, uh, um, uh, in Cambodia. Um, and I, I know we are so diverse um, and there are so much more to, to be talked about, to, to be introduced. Um, but I do not think that we at that time started to already saw the potential and that's also the reason when I um, in 2000 uh, late 2017 um, I decided to give up my very paid job mm -hmm. and to work on uh, promoting uh, community cuisine but because I know that if I only promote but the local uh, people still do not have the confidence and stand up and 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 and, and and you know and work on it you know doing marketing but then the product is not ready is also another thing so i decided not not to only uh, promote but i preserved uh, in a sense uh, because um because we need uh, our local people to understand the potential and work on it and promote it right because for me if i didn't understand the potential I wouldn't be able to give up my web page job to do this either, right? Mm. So I travel all over Cambodia, uh, collecting the recipes from the elderly people, who um, who are the one who keep the um, uh, who has the knowledge, um, but not necessarily being heard, being seen. And I would like them to be highlighted, and we would like to uh, create these. Uh, uh, um, uh, recipe videos and put it back uh, on our social media so that our locals start to see the potential and can relate uh, to who we were as Cambodian and as Cambodian cuisine. Um, so that's how I um, started to do the uh, research and, and travel and the archiving, preserving. But then we also um, have to elevate it in a sense that because, in a sense, because the thing is, um, you know, we. After so many years, um, 40, 50 years, because Cambodian gone through um, the war, difficult times, and the food that used to be glorious, used to be like, you know, spending a lot of time cooking, you know, um, that Cambodian used to be proud of, become, became survival food, right? Yeah. And as a younger generation like us, like me, I grew up understanding the survival food. So how do we make the survival food? But then how do we also bring back the flavors that we have forgotten or maybe don't even know that existed to a place and then make it in a sense that it's acceptable, but not only acceptable, but very delicious and very well respected. And that's why we do the elevations. We create, um, we build a, a home that provide the um, uh, private home dining, cooking classes, homestay, um, a center where people all over the world and the students in Cambodia can come and learn uh, and to get their understanding about uh, Cambodian uh, cuisine and the mm. knowledge. Um, but then one thing that we have to do um, in order for the world to start recognizing us is the promotion. And that's why I spend a lot of time traveling wherever I could um, to uh, give the chance for people to hear the stories, but also let them try the flavors. Right, because if you hear the story, but then you cannot um, taste it, how could you relate to it, right? Yeah. And that's why we started to have articles on New York Times and many, many articles um, around the world. So, create um, the 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 um, uh, what? Create the, the scenes that people started our local started to see the potential and then uh, um, uh, earn their confidence to talk about it and mm -hmm. and can invest on Cameroon cuisine yeah. and then give them the, um, the the new image. This is how Cambodian can look like and this is how much Cambodian can be sold, mm -hmm. right? And then promote it. So these three components is something are something that we focusing on equally because otherwise if three of these are not going along, I do not think it can be very successful. Okay, so it's a, a, all... long, a long answer. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> very, very interesting. So it all started uh, when you could hardly find any Khmer 
food mm -hmm. when you were in the USA mm -hmm. and it's really inspires you to start working on promoting our Khmer cuisine. That's right. Yeah, and you and you mentioned interesting concept love and appreciation. Mm -hmm. So you love something, it does not mean that you really appreciate it. Right? So um our love and appreciation to different concepts and do you think that right now Although Cambodian people say that, oh, I really love Khmer food, mm. something like that. But do you think that are they appreciating Khmer dishes enough? Mm. Well, I think you raise a very good uh, point, right? So sometimes the love um, uh, started from the the. Um, the home training of palate, right? This is what we ate, and we are customized to it. Um, we are trained to to eat it, so we love it. Mm. But if you don't see the potential, if you don't want to learn what can it give back, um, um, it's hard for anyone to appreciate. And appreciate here is doesn't always can come in in dollars. But what about our health, right? Yeah. So. Our food has been providing us not only just to, not just to fulfill us, but it has been our medicine for thousands of years. How much do we know about this? And then, and we, when when it comes to the you know um, a much bigger pictures, what about the uh, food as part of the culture? the arts right as a home cook a lot of people think that okay i cook because i have to cook but we might not realize that as a cook you are an artist um, you are also a doctor because if you don't care about what you cook and how you cook you're gonna make everyone sick yeah. have you ever thought about that yeah true but then if we if we can think again in a big picture if food if we can make use food as one of the components to bring people all over the world to come to our country, how much can it help us? Yeah. Right? And if our food is being recognized around the world, how much of the uh, ingredients that can that we can import um, to all over the world? And how much will it help the economy? Have we ever thought about that? So for me, you know, I love Cambodian food because that's how I was trained and that's how I, that's, how, that's who we are. But if I did not have a chance to travel, to experience all of this and to see, to witness um, other cuisine and how much they have tried, they have worked and they have invested, um, I won't be able to see the potential. And I, and you know, that's why I'm very happy to be here sitting at Rosewood because Rosewood has uh, seen this potential and we've been working together um, in collaboration. I have um, uh, my sections um, uh, to uh, a chance for me to, um, you know, not only have the Cambodian food in a very high and respected uh, uh, hotel, but I have the chance to train a uh, um, uh, uh, chef um, to understand more uh, and to be appreciated uh, appre um, to, to, to appreciate their own cuisine even more yeah. um, and um, and that's why I'm you know and you know as long as we we can see that sharing uh, is a great thing but use this sharing to also make a living mm -hmm. that's even better yeah right and that's also the reason that we uh, as a as a team, not only be able to travel uh, to, uh, uh, um, around the world, but we create cookbooks. Because you know, when I grew up, and I would like, I, I would wanted to know what was Cambodian food like. We couldn't find a lot of things, almost none, right? Um, so, and I was um, asked so many times, what would what Cambodian food was like and I did not know and I yeah. and, and I just were it's just so difficult for me to relate um, um that's why I decided we as a group we decided that you know we still can keep traveling we still can um, uh, keep telling stories uh, about our food and our Cambodian story but cookbook can do it faster yeah. because it can travel 
all over the world. And as a result, you know, our second cookbook right now called Sally, featuring the um, uh, ho um, royal home cuisine uh, back from the uh, between the 50s and 70s, is being nominated in the World um, Cookbook Award called Goldman. And we will be there by the end of this um, month to represent Cambodia, but also to represent the, the quality, the art, the culture um, of Cambodia. You know, yeah. and that's also a part of stories that we um, that we uh, use um, um, Cambodian cuisine, but actually, you know, to spread a lot more about Cambodia in general. Um, but you know, I know food, so I use food as my angle, right? Okay. And I also would like to inspire others too that you know you don't to work on food, but whatever feel, whatever dreams you have, use it, but also use it in a ways that is also promote who you are and who you are as a country as well. Yeah, so uh, showing our Khmer food to the world is not enough, but you have to like let them taste the flavor of our dishes, mm. right? So then what makes our Khmer cuisine oh. unique mm. and distinctive from other uh, cuisine? Mm. This is a very, very difficult question because if we can, you know, up to this point, um, if, we, um, if we are a, a people who open-minded, we can say that no culture in the world can sit and purely by its own, right? Mm -hmm. um, everyone has an um, influence by or to others. Um, and if you think about the um, Cambodian history um, between our neighboring country, you know, it's, our border has been moved so many times. And the border of the country moves, but people, but, but people stay, yeah. right? So just think of that. We can say that, you know, there's a lot of diversity. Um, we also have a lot of influences. Um, and that's also the reason for me to keep learning. Um, up to these days, I never stop learning. I read a lot of things from all over the world so that we can um, learn more about the history, how, it, how things happen the way it is. Um, but traveling around Cambodia and understanding uh, more knowledge the knowledge that the um, the grandmothers, the grandfathers still remember and share with us helped me to, um, you know, to uh, bring back those um, old flavors. So what I can say is that when it comes to Cambodian cuisine, it involves so much with the um, lemongrass paste. Oh, lemongrass paste. Um, it's also, you know, Growing up, um, especially growing up in uh, the main town of Phnom Penh and also the provinces around uh, Phnom Penh, we never cook with anything. I'm sorry, we never use um, chili or the spicy um, component in our main dish. It's always on the side, right? Yeah. That's also one thing. But Cambodian cuisine is very um, well balanced. Well balanced in terms of, for example, if we make a, a salad, um, it has to have the balance of uh, sweet, sour, and salty hidden in the dressing, mm -hmm. right? And then the crunchy and all those stuff. It's also very seasonal uh, because Cambodian, especially now still the countryside, we don't, a lot of people still cannot afford the, um, well, before and up to now, still cannot afford um, the refrigerator. Um, so they cook whatever available in that season. Right. Yeah. But it's also um, original because whatever they have there, um, they cook from what they have. So one of the projects that I did, only using uh, one of our very well-known uh, soup called lokako. Right. Everyone yeah. knows lokako. But then, a person who used who cooks some lokako as a business cook differently. A person who has who who's a, a mother who cooks uh, um, to feed the family cook differently. Uh, the person who, uh, you know, live in the Stung Trang in Koh Trong, and she cooks differently, right? In Siem Reap, she cooks differently. So, everything combined, I can make an assumption that food is very seasonal, uh, regional, mm. but also very personalized. Very personalized. Yeah.
But it comes to personal life, you might, well, let me raise an example. In a family, our grandmother or our mother can cook us, can cook us the same thing. They can teach us to cook the same thing, but not necessarily that the siblings can do the same thing. Mm. Yeah, because we yeah. have our own preference, correct? So for me, I would like to um, promote the um, diversities, right? The differences. It's not mistake. It's just different. And all of us can enjoy the diversity once uh, we can we we can say that it is a, just a different. We call it the cockney women cockney. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's so that it's also give us a lot of chance to learn about others, um, to accept they are who us are who they are. You okay. know. So um, you know, and food also not food also quite similar to how we how we live our life. It's all about balance, right? Sweet, salty, bitter, yeah. um, umami, um, yeah, all of those um, spicy. You know, in life also, you know, we can put all of those um, components to make our life rich, uh, to make our life um, uh, interesting. The same as food. But if you um, let one of the components to be overwhelming to the rest, it's not balanced. It completely the same, yeah. Mm. And it just like through trials and errors. Um, uh, because I know I said this because I'm, I never been through um um, um professional training. Um, I'm a um, self taught, so mm. I've learned so much through mistakes. Yeah. Um, and I learned so much about uh, from uh, uh, the differences, and that's how I appreciate um Cambodian food even more. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, people have different style when it comes to cooking and like you mentioned uh, some law could go uh, yeah. although you are in the same family but it doesn't mean that you have the same style in cooking yeah. so nowadays uh, some people like you mentioned in the restaurant uh, they might cook uh, some law could go uh, based on the different style perhaps uh, they are influenced by some of the dishes uh, from the other country so it doesn't mean that uh, our dish now is purely with the uh, history with the Khmer in ingredient perhaps they have some influences from others so do, do you think that could it lead to the loss of our identity like our national identity very good questions but when it comes to um, original mm. or fewer or authentic what do you mean? And as a as a Cambodian, mm -hmm. do do we know what it means? Mm -hmm. And how do we judge that this is authentic and this is not authentic? That's why I and you know, some local can be very different from hundred years ago. Yeah. Based on what? Based on the availability of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and also it's based on um, what is available in that area. For example, we might find uh, Salakako very different uh, uh, in Rotanakari because they have so many ingredients that from the foraging, for example. But in Phnom Penh, when it comes to Phnom Penh or restaurants, they have to base on 100% of what available in the market. Right. So again, I would like us to open up and ask ourselves so what does it mean when it comes to authentic food? That's number one. Again, I did not, um, you know, um, grow up with all of this knowledge. Yeah. The knowledge, because the knowledge that I had based on what what I've seen around my area in Phnom Penh, um, and what my parents cook for us, or my, my grandfather cook for us. Again, I, I can't answer, and that's the reason I travel. That's the reason I um, would like to make an assumption. What is Cambodian food? You know, I thought that, because since 2005, I've I already been doing that. And I thought, well, maybe because I didn't have enough time because I was working as well for others at that time, Cambodian living arts in particular. And I thought, okay, if I would like to answer this, 
I have to give up my real paid job and do it full time so I have enough time, right? So after more than full time, more than six years, I still do not have the answer, mm. right? So, but but the only thing that I can do as as little as I can do is to bring. I'm sorry, collecting all the knowledge. From different part of people, I'm mm. sorry. From different part of Cambodia, from different knowledge, and all combined, right? So, once we know who we are or what we can relate it to, and doesn't matter whether you want to present yourself as a authentic Cambodian cuisine based on where you grew up. Do it, right? Do it. I cook my own recipe from Sim Rip, and Sim Rip the krung is different from the uh, krung and krung thing. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. But as long as you know who you are and you really would like to show that part, do it. And even though you would like to do it in a way, i s called contemporary, na? or sometimes you do fusions, doesn't matter. I believe as long as you understand the roots, the root that you try to learn to connect, wherever you go, whatever you do, it still show who you are. Oh. Believe me, and that's the reason why I try so hard to keep learning and bringing back those flavors, those understanding, right? Because again, once you understand the roots, you appreciate the roots because you know the potential. Mm. Believe me, you won't you won't want to grab others anymore, right? Yeah. Because right now the um the the um um the worries that all of us have is that one day Cambodian cuisine will be lost yeah. because we have all the fast food chains here and there da 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 da. For me. It's not. It's not about how many are coming. It's how much knowledge do we know and how do we use it. Mm. Yeah. So I'm not against any anyone who bring things in. But how? You know? How do we use it um, in a sense that you know it's being um, uh, um, um, valuable, yeah. very respectful, and it come from all of us. Right, so maybe 15 years ago, not a lot of people would be able to um, invest in opening like Khmer restaurant, like Khmer Khmer restaurant. But maybe now, for example, right? Yeah. So this is something that I would like to um, uh, share, and hopefully as a as a guidance, as a um, uh, as a role models. Um, and when you know um, uh, about a uh, Cambodian cuisine. You know, there are so many things you can do, right? Like me right now, and I try to do a lot at one time. Do you know why? Because I would like to show that we can do so many things. Once you are become a chef, and a, um, a Cambodian cuisine chef in particular, you can do so many things, right? Yeah. I'm right now too busy. I'm sorry to say. Uh, well, well, I'm not sorry to say, but I I didn't mean to use it as a you know as a things to 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 feel um you know um I don't know arrogant or anything, but I I really um I would like to um, to tell people, do it, do it in the sense that it it's being uh, recognized, uh, recognizable. Give it a new image and do it the best you could. Mm. Sometimes before starting things, right, which is great. But starting is not as it's not too difficult compared to maintaining it, right? And sometimes if you start just to create mess for others to clean up, think about it too. You know, and um, that's why if we decide to do something, we we want to make sure that the quality and the image really could represent Cambodia. All right, so. As long as you know your root, uh, the Khmer traditional dishes would not be lost. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We understand the roots, connect ourselves to the roots. Mm -hmm. But then, how do we use that yeah. in the sense that everyone can enjoy and everyone accept and accept it 
in a very respectful way. Yeah. So uh, for 18 years uh, in this field, you have been working a lot with the Khmer cuisine. Uh -huh. So what are the significant changes or impacts that you think that you have made on the food industry in Cambodia, uh, particularly in the Khmer food? <laughs> um, well, as you can see now on social media, mm -hmm. there are so many um, people started to uh, uh, um, were, uh, um, produce contents based on their home cuisine, based on yeah. their village, yes. based on their um, provinces. I, I, for me, it's not important to say that um, I, started, I started that and inspire others. Because once everyone started to see the potential and they start doing that and can earn income from that, I applaud them and keep doing more of that. Um, and something that I'm very proud of was that when I started this, uh, we, we opened our home to, um, to welcome um, people from all over the world to have an authentic, you know, home feeling, home cooked food at home, right? And, you know, almost 100% um, of the guests that we hosted were outsiders, right? But the more we keep doing this, the more local people we host. So up to now, it's 40% um, local and 60% outside. Mm. What I'm trying to tell you right here is that people, our, uh, um, uh, our local, started to appreciate yeah. not only love anymore, appreciate our cuisine, appreciate the experience, um, and appreciate here also because they would like to learn about the cuisine, the culture, um, and it shows through the because they are willing to pay. Um, and that's where, for me, I'm very, very happy to. Um, and another thing is that maybe, you know, 15 years ago, like what I said, you know, it's very hard for anyone to really decide to invest in Cambodian restaurant like a real Cambodian restaurant. If they have their investment, they would do Japanese, Chinese, um, you know, you name it, right? France. But there are people. Now they started to see the potential of our local cuisine and they are willing to open authentic my cuisine. And they have reached out to me. And that's what I, 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 I see. And um, you know, like 15 years ago, um, because I've been invited to many different conferences um, around the world talking about uh, uh, food, food studies, food, 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 tea, food there. And I keep hearing after 15 years, now Cambodian is being part of it. Meaning that not only um, not only our local started to see, but the world started to see not only through the flavors, but they started to see in the academic way. Um, you know that yeah. somebody can represent Cambodia, talk about Cambodian food, not only the flavors, but what happened and what is the roots, and that's what made me so happy. Uh, also, that means uh, people start learning mm -hmm. about our Khmer mm -hmm. dishes, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Ah. Yes, yes. You know, every single time when people said, after 15 years, welcome Cambodia to the team. Mm. And this is the first time I hear about Cambodian food. Yeah. Because before this, when it comes to Cambodian food, I'm sorry, when it comes to Cambodia, it's either Angkor Wat or the Killing Field. And I would like to tell the world that we have a lot more than that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yes. so, um, you know, and also uh, people not only um, when I travel, but when people started to want to learn about um, um, the uh, food in, 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 in ASEAN, you know, they tend to go to our neighboring country. But now they have the source to come here.
Yeah, and you know, I never thought that I that I being recognized as a food historian or food archaeologist. I never thought of that. But because to do what I do, I need to do many other things, you know, to complete the whole stories. Um, and when people, when people um, come and they learn about me and they call me different names, and I'm I never thought of it, but I'm I'm happy about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Cambodia has more to offer, not yeah, just more. about Angkor Wat Temple, uh, about people, our, our his, food, his our history, culture. yeah, mm -hmm. more than that. And you are yeah. so proud of it, like, 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 so proud of the work that you have been working to um, promote our country, and now people know more about our my dishes, yeah. and they also are willing to learn about it. Yeah. All right. So yeah. one last question. <laughs> so. Uh, what would you foresee the future of our Khmer dishes? And do you think that in the future our cuisine will be rec recognized worldwide? I do believe so. If I don't believe it, I wouldn't give up my very job to do this. <laughs> I've been travel, of course, um, and I've been uh, like being a guest chef in different countries. Um, but we also have lots of um, um, interest uh, from people all over the world, um, you know, restaurateurs, and Cambodian or non-Cambodian do have um, real Cambodian food wherever they are. Yeah. Um, so for me, I, I see a big potential. Yeah. Um, and again, I think after almost seven years, what we have done help um, uh, uh, the food culture and the food story, the food scene of Cambodia in some way. And I, and I do believe so, because, you know, that's also one of the things that we need more people to do this. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I spend a lot of time with is, you know, um, inspire new emerging chef, yeah. right? Aspiring chef. That's right, because how much can we do, you know? Yeah. But those are the ones who really need to be injected. That, you know, we have a lot more um, uh, to do with Korean cuisine and we need all of them mm -hmm. to be the one who, um, um, because they still have a lot of energy and they have their fresh mind and they have the skill from their school. Um, yeah, so I've been, um, you know, helping different schools to inspire uh, mm -hmm. younger chef and all this stuff. And that's something that I love to do. <laughs> All right. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So now you also like share the knowledge with the younger chefs so that they can have the same spirits as you, mm. like working uh, towards our yeah. Uh, food. Yeah, yeah. I imagine you know at least ten Cambodian restaurants in New York, mm. right? <laughs> Fifteen in Sydney, and I would like to see um, Cambodian ingredients say came from Cambodia, came from Cambodia, in other supermarket shelves. Yeah. And that's that's my dream. That's your dream. Yeah. All right. So, Chef, thank you so much for uh, sharing with us your you. story and also your thought and your work on the mm. my food. Yeah. And really, and we really uh, appreciate your effort, like the work that you have been doing. So, mm. thank you so much. Thank you. Mom.